Hey, welcome everybody to another podcast session of the Joe's Bot Podcast. We have Jason Moreno, producer, songwriter, etc., etc., etc. Jason, welcome to the podcast, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Joe's Bot, for having us up here, man. Appreciate it. How do you like this music right here? Hey, that's some that's some great tunes, man. That's a good backbeat right there. We will put some country lyrics on it, though. <laughs> yeah. Jason, man, thank you for joining us, man. And it's been a pleasure. Um, you are an individual with with a lot of content when it, with regards to music. And we're going to talk music today, man. Tell me about that, man. What are you currently working on right now? Man, we've been uh, we've been in Nashville for the last, uh, I guess, six months uh, back and forth. We, we've got we've got a lot of good music coming out. But as the industry dictates, you know, nobody puts out albums, complete albums anymore. So. Our format's a little bit different. We're uh, we're putting out one single at a time, completely branded. It each its own album cover, its own merchandise, its music video, and we just released our first one called Heartbreak Song. Um, we're heading back to Nashville mid December to wrap up our second single, which will come out sometime maybe end of January, something like that. But yeah, so. You know, we've, uh, we've recorded two albums before here locally. Um, you know, it gives great experience, but this nothing compares to Music Row, man. It's just been an amazing, amazing experience for us. So, so nobody makes albums anymore. I mean, I, I I go back to the days of vinyls, CDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with the with the digital age, you know, you you don't buy. I mean, we we can we have the capability of doing it, but everybody buys one song at a time. You know, ninety nine cents on. On, on iTunes or whatever, $1.29 if you're a rock star. But you know, it's it's uh it it's just easier uh when you're putting the stuff together and you're producing these things to do it one at a time. Uh you get a lot put pay a lot more attention to one song. Uh the details are there. And if you hear the song Heartbreak song, you can I mean there's so much detail in the song, even though it sounds big and and huge. There's tons and tons of detail. I think there's seven layers of guitar on there. So it's just, you know, you get to be creative uh, nowadays. And it's just, uh, I think it's, I think it's good for the musicians. It's bad because yeah, I'm used to buying CDs and vinyls and, you know, getting 12 songs on a CD, you know, but. Uh, and yeah, hoping yeah. that one hits, right? Hoping that one's hit. But yeah, those days are gone, you know, back in the day when they had the 45s, you had the, what they call the throwaway, which was the B side. And then you had the main single on the A side, right? But uh, um, you know, nowadays it's one song at a time, man. So, so Jason, man, um, when you say you guys are working on on this one song that you guys put out, uh, are are you a part of the band? Are you the booking agent? Are you the writer? What 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 role do you play with Bucking Crazy? Well, I took over the band management maybe seven eight years ago. And I performed with the band with Roy Torres and Buck and Crazy for all that time. Um, we wrote music, but we never recorded it. So we were making what they call a cover band. Um, and we had original content, but again, it wasn't published. Um, it was a regional kind of a thing. Uh, we didn't own the rights to those first two albums. And the guy who owns the rights doesn't want us to use them. So, it, you know, it was very, very... Uh, a uh, hard lesson to learn. So mm -hmm. my role now with the band, I, I own a company called Buck and Crazy Productions. Um, we produce um, the music for Buck and Crazy or Roy Torres and Buck and Crazy band. I also still perform, but my role has changed more to as an executive type of producer. Um, I'm writing also our next single called A Girl Like That, which drops uh, at the end of January. Uh, is a completely 100% uh, original one of mine that I wrote. Uh, of course, when you're working in the music industry, uh, there's this little known fact: if if anybody's in the room when you're having having that creative process, they automatically become a co-writer. So, I think Roy sneezed in one session or something, and he's co-writer also. <laughs> <out there. laughs> um, and then we've been working; we've been blessed to work with. You know, the Valley has so much talent. Um, there's so many guys out there pushing and working it hard and trying to get their music out heard. Uh, you know, I could 
I could name a few, but there's so, so many guys out there in all sorts of genres. But we've been lucky. Uh, we got picked up by um, uh, John Garcia, who is the uh, lead guitar player for Garth Brooks, mm -hmm. Trish Yearwood, and he's a local guy. He's from Westlaco, Texas. He now lives in Nashville. He's in Nashville, you know, for the last 30 years. Performed with these major, major acts, but he's kind of taken a, a, a liking to our music, to our style, and he's uh, he's the producer on on, on music and some kind. Uh, he's the uh, composer, but it's all original content now. From it's coming from the valley. It's, it's it's here, you know, and and we're taking it up there, and they're putting it all together for us. And so we have a hundred percent say as an independent uh, artist. We have 100% say in what the music sounds like. Um, if you record with a label or with somebody else, you got to do what they want. But uh, as an independent, you know, we're we're able to be more creative. So hopefully everybody enjoys I think we've gotten a great response on Heartbreak Song. So um, so my role has, you know, has evolved over the years. Uh, you know, now it's uh, I've, I've got other bands that I manage also and, and, and help promote to uh, uh, but uh, my main role is as the executive producer for Buck and Crazy, yeah. So, you know, you mentioned a lot of the, the freedom to do things. And, and that most recently I was having a conversation with, res with respect to wrestling, man. And we were talking about like where wrestling has, has gone from before to now. And, and that was one of the topics that, that, that came to be where, where we said, you know what, wrestling isn't the same. Because back in those days, they were, they, they were given the freedom to create a storyline yeah. and now it's like this is a cookie cutter that yeah. is scripted and you got to do as is and follow the rules and follow the orders heartbreak song by roy torres and bucking crazy so if i'm understanding correctly you took the name of bucking crazy the band that you were with and you just made it your own production company or or is that the way it goes right well, yeah, I mean, we were performing uh, Roy and Roy and Buck and Crazy. I mean, it's uh -huh. the same thing, right? But right. we were performing, we were doing 250, 260 shows a year, you know, uh, for five, six years. Wow. You know, in the dives in the dance, in the, in the, in the, in the cantinas, in the dance halls, you know, anyone that would, you know, we were out there, we, right. we worked, right. we worked it, we were in the trenches, but we had nobody paying attention to the business side, Correct. Um, which, you know, I was like, look, I'm a, it, it's a, a, enough of the bar diving, man. Let's, let's, let's do something with this music. Let's do something with this talent. So I, I assume that role, uh, marketing and, and publishing is my background, you know, um, when I was an adult in my adult life, now, <laughs> <laughs> kind of regressing now, I think, but, um, Yes, yeah, so I assume that role and, uh, you know, I'm learning as I'm going and we make mistakes, but yeah, you know, to, to go and hire a publicist and to go and hire a marketing person and to go and hire a radio promoter. And, you know, unfortunately, the music business is a pay to play kind of a thing and it's cutthroat. And, uh, you know, if, if you're if you don't have these guys on your payroll, you don't get any spins. But we've been lucky enough to uh, to do it on our own and do it our way wait 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 wait, wait 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 you mean to tell me la politica exists in the music <laughs> industry too <laughs> man i'm gonna get so much shit for this oh, I can't say that. but yeah man it's it's a pay to play man and yeah. and it's, that's why a lot of these guys going independent and you know uh, social media has kind of hurt the music industry uh -huh. when it comes to music sales but when it comes to exposure I mean, we've got worldwide exposure right now. I think we have something like 2,000 spins in Australia. Um, wow. Uh, and and we, when we look at our, our, our metadata, all the data, the, the an, an analytics from all of, um, all of the music clearinghouses, it's all over the world right now. And uh, Germany and, and Bulgaria and, and Australia. And we've got all of these, all this exposure worldwide. But when it comes to radio, uh, which still controls music, it's yeah, it's it's a little bit political, man. Wow, wow. Let's let's take let, let's take a listen to Heartbreak Song, Roy yeah. Davis and Bucking Crazy. Let's 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 listen to a cut real quick and just guide us to what the process is, or just yeah. tell us what you want to tell us about this song. Here we go. <laughs> Hey! 
Take you on tour with us. <laughs> we, could, we could do podcasts on the bus, man. Right. Hell yeah. We got the radio Dying for some steel guitar. And I hear somebody falling. So, on the guitar there is that's Johnny Garcia. Playing. Okay. He's a guy from Westlake, right? Yeah. yeah. Garth Brooks guitar. guitar. Big sound. Yeah, wow. that's very clean. Super sick. Wow, so man. The song, the song was uh, written by Johnny and a fellow by the name of Adam Wood, who's, when we heard the song, the demo track, Adam's voice was on it. And oh my God, it, we didn't want to touch it because it sounded so beautiful. Right. And then um, uh, Greg Crow was the, the third co-writer. They, they presented this song to us because we were going up with some originals and we weren't ready. We didn't have the composition ready yet. So um, we went with something that was one of their songs and we listened to, but maybe I bought songs and we, we p- picked this one. And uh, they wrote it about 10 years ago and we fell in love with it instantly. And we did make a few changes to kind of bring it back home to Texas style country. Cause it was before it was kind of really big Nashville sound and still got it a little bit. We're trying to bridge the gap a little bit. Cause you got Nashville country and you got Texas country. And then you got and, real grand Valley country, which is led by country South Roland, Texas right? Country. Exactly. <laughs> South Texas. We, had a, we had a show this weekend and we had, I mean, you've ever heard of Alabama, you got a fiddle in the band. Well, in right. South Texas, you got to have an accordion in the band. Yeah. So, so we, we brought in one of the hometown boys and he played with us, uh, Ernie Bravo, um, this weekend. And, and we had a show, a release party for the video. And, you know, it's, it's a regional thing, but it's our sound. Um, and, you know, this next, uh, this next single is actually going to have accordion on it. We recorded it originally with a mandolin. Uh, that those parts, but we've kind of decided to replace it and kind of keep to our root. We've got uh, Frankie Gallardo, uh Senior, who's uh, who's laying down the the, re- the accordion track for us. So uh, it's called "A Girl Like That," and it'll be out in about sixty days. So you said that's coming out in January. Am I correct? Twenty twenty one, right yeah, on. In, end of January. Yeah, we'll have a new single coming out about every four months for the next twelve, maybe eighteen months. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, the interesting part of all of that is that, you know, there, there's individuals that go in there with no plan of action whatsoever. And and they'll just start releasing. Uh, they got a lot yeah. of content and they just start releasing one after another, after another, after another. Um, yeah. And then they're filled with this whole selection of, of, of a uh, of a discography. But yeah. nonetheless, nobody's listening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, we yeah, our, our goal again, we were going to put out a, a branded song, you know, so we put out the song, we put out the video, we put out branded, branded merchandise. Can you see that? You oh. know? Yeah. I where, where, where can I get one of those? I got one for you, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, we're, we're, we sell them online on our buck and crazy page, um, Facebook or anybody. I mean, we don't have a store or anything yet. Right, we're right. not that that organized yet but you know the song in in just a couple weeks from release has almost twenty thousand spins and by spins i mean that's unique times that there's twenty thousand people that have heard it and they've probably heard it more than once um so there's actually more more exposure but those are unique you know and and when we released the music video on Saturday, within 24 hours, we had almost 3,000 views. So I think people like it. I hope people like it. And uh, um, you know, if video comes calling and they want to put it on on the on the radio, we'll be happy to to do that. I think they'll come around in a couple of months. We've got a radio tour that uh, one of our promoters is working on now. We are actually seen with a with a big time 
radio promoter. You got you got to do it, man. If you want your yeah. music to get heard, you gotta you gotta play the game, man. That, that was my next question because fun yeah. fact: Joe's bad used to be a DJ. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 What what station? Uh, well, I used to work in TV at a local station. Uh, I don't think I'm free to oh. say the station's name or whatever, yeah. but yeah. but uh, nonetheless, like I was at a lot of bars and clubs in this whole area. Yeah. And one of the things that I always made a point to is let me listen to the up and coming individuals because yeah. exposure for them is a good thing for our area, for our community. Yeah. So yeah, anyways, yeah, we've got, um, what can I say your stations on the line or. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the rules on this. I'm not going to lie no, to I, you. I, I don't know either, but you know, we've had, we've had a couple of, of regional radio stations give us a lot of support. Right. Um, the lo the local country station in 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 the Rio Grande Valley has played our originals. It, they do it on a on a on a certain time where they play everybody. Right. Um, we're not we're not in the um, in the what do they call that the general the uh, the, the major market area. Yeah, you're not in the yeah. major market area yet. Yeah. This, uh, so they do it on I think it's Friday nights. They play all the local guy stuff. So, um, you know, one of the stigmas of performing so much in just one region has been you get branded as a uh folk a band a folk hero a folk legend or a folk band or you know you're 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 tied to that region right it was very difficult out of that and people wanting to hire us and thinking that we're a local band and uh you know it's it's been tough so but i think now with you know with the product that we're delivering to the to the public uh people are going to realize you know we're we're legit you know yeah so. i mean there nothing could be further from the truth because oh. when when you're saying you know well you guys started off as a cover band and now yeah. you're saying well we write our own content and you know we, we're here and so now book us so that i think that's probably where you where you're trying to get over right yeah. i'm not yeah, lie to you. It's, yeah it's a hard market to get out of I'm not gonna lie to you. When when I was listening to Bucking Crazy, um, I'm over here as well, thinking that it's a cover band. But you know, once I heard that 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 you guys were dropping with the video and and it's there's a big difference because yeah, when you're official, you have a video. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and 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 that's completely different. Yeah, and we put. I mean, that video is just amazing, man. It's uh, if you got the chance to watch it, it's it's almost like a small movie, right. a short film. Uh, our director Jason Johnston, who's been a part, you know, I used uh, in the back in the day when I did, you know, uh, commercial production, you know, for for different companies. You know, he was always my camera guy, my di director of photography, and now he's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, he's gone and did some work, national work with. Um, you know the Discovery Channel. He did some stuff with uh, National Geographic, and you know, so he's just so creative. And I tell him what my vision is. I say I want people to feel this way when they see it, and he just knows how to put the camera and the lighting and the, set the mood. And and he just hit it nail on. And that's exactly the thing I wanted people to have when they watch the video. And he yeah. told the story exactly how I wanted them to say, they see it. And you know it. It you know with Roy, Roy is so goddamn talented. Oh, uh, did I cuss? I'm sorry. Let me let me do that so you can edit that out. <laughs> You're fine, man. We're good. <laughs> Roy is so talented. You know, you know he's he's he. People are just naturally drawn to him and his voice, and he's come a long way too. And you know, um, sorry, I didn't couldn't get him here today, but he. Um, he you know he's he's going places and i'm I'm glad to be a partner with him on this deal and you know he, we get we make a great team he's the talent he's the front man and i'm the muscle behind it and yeah you know, we, we get it we get it going man so it works well, it's working out really well you're hitting on, a, on on the topic of partnerships and collaboration i mean yeah. nothing could be further than the truth and when 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 these two things happen and coexist in unison man shoot oh yeah you know, it's it's amazing yeah. And, you know, the, this whole pay for play thing and, you know, it's expensive. <laughs> well, well, even to produce a great product, man, it takes money, you know, it, yeah. it takes money. And even just to get in the studio, the, you know, and, and with a name like Johnny, it, you know, he's got to make his 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 money, too. Right. Um, but we've got some great partners, you know, 
local guys, Five by Five Brewing Company in, in Mission, Texas is a we they, they've endorsed that we've endorsed them. Uh, we got an endorsement yeah. deal, and and they're I just got that shirt right here. You got the shirt on, you can't yeah. see it, but it's yeah, see. yeah, it's it's, yeah, uh, it's you know it's a bunch of veterans, and 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 they make some great beer, and they're in it for the long haul. They heard us, and they, they believe in us, and they've they've jumped on board, and so they've helped us finance some things. We've got you know so a local couple of boutiques that are Western Wear down here, Southern mm -hmm. Comfort, and and Dos Chicas, supporting us like crazy financially. And also, um, you know, uh, promotion wise and exposure wise, they're, they're pushing for it. And these are all local people coming together to support each other. And right. in return, we're, we're promoting their products as well. But to make something beautiful, make it happen, you know, because we don't have the big wallet that some of those bigger bands have that that, you know, can just jump in the studio whenever they feel like it. You know, um, we got it. We got to, you know, it's not it's it's not uh it's not a poor man's game you know so, yeah yeah um you know so yeah the partnership has been great and we've had others you know back in the day mustang lounge was they they financed one of our singles way back then you know when and you know there's been plenty 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 of support and we just feel the love and you know I'm, i i commented on on facebook the other day i said man i i'm so overwhelmed by all of the support from the valle you know from yeah from our rasa you know they're they're like oh man these these hometown boys are, are going after it man let's 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 help them out and so we've been blessed man we've been blessed brother to have that you know well i mean yeah i mean we always root for the home team or, or at least I, i'd like to think that right yeah yeah now now where where are we headed is the so your guys right now are on, on streaming services such as spotify itunes title are you all on, you know, on all those yeah, we've got, you know, Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, um, TouchTunes, um, all, all the major. We, I think there's like 45 plat different platforms that we're on. Okay. Um, you know, just search it up under Roy Torres Bucking Crazy or Heartbreak Song and it'll be out there. Um, we're waiting on um, a radio tour um, of the song. So it hasn't been released to radio. Mm -hmm. They can pick it up if they want to. And I think a lot of like the Texas charts are go they go off of Spotify spins, but unless you submit to their um, program, um, you know, there it's you're not gonna. I mean, you can Una, have one hit wonders, I guess, but <laughs> una promoción para fucking crazy, fucking yeah. crazy, pick it up right now. Yes, you got the voice, bro. You got it, bro. I I used to. Uh... Well, again, my, a little bit of background of myself. Uh, I got I graduated with a bachelor's in journalism. Yeah. Um, and during my college days, I was DJing the bars, the club circuit here in the Valley. And, you know, uh, I got to know a lot of the people uh, in the in the industry. And then I moved on to a TV station, a, a Spanish TV station early in the morning. So I was a stage manager there. And, you know, again, you get to meet so many people. And it was the best time of my yeah. life. Yeah. But it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, when 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 we and when I go back to the years of 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 gigging and in, in, in nights in the clubs and you know, oh that, that was great life, man. We had oh, fun. Man. I got yeah. so many stories, but yeah, it's you know, we 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 could pay the bills, but it was it was a rough life, man. We missed rough. a lot of missed a lot of birthdays, we missed a lot of family gatherings, we missed uh, uh and, and I want to say maybe we, we were paying our dues at that time yeah. um you know and and now i we, we had this plan to go to nashville about about five years ago to do this and it just it fell through at the end and we just didn't get to do it and maybe it wasn't the right time you know yeah um and so now when covid hit and uh the industry collapsed and everybody everybody was out of work all the musicians all the entertainment industry uh you know i had i had a little bit of money saved up and you know i told roy and roy was down in the dumps he had already kind of left music and he didn't know what to do and he had gone to work in the oil fields and you know i called him up and i said hey man uh let's give it a shot if you want to do it one more time and let's do it right though um and he says what does that mean and i said well come on down Let's talk about it. And 
he came over to the house and uh, we talked about it. And I said, all right, let's go. He says, when? I said, right now, let's take off. So he went home, packed the bag. We jumped in the car and drove up to Nashville. And uh, we picked up uh, our drummer. Um, mm -hmm. And he had just finished partying from the night before. I think. And he came out with sunglasses <laughs> and a cap. And I said, hey, jump in the car, man. We're going to Nashville. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Can yeah. I go to Nashville? <laughs> yeah, now you're ready. <laughs> Of course, we're a bunch, of, a bunch of weird dudes in shorts and chanclas over on, on in Nashville. People probably thought we were kind of weird or whatever, but uh, you know, no, they received no. us very well. Nobody in shorts yeah. and chanclas is weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we, we jumped in the car. We drove 18 hours straight, got to Nashville, went straight to the studio. And, you know, Johnny was waiting for us and we laid down the first track. And uh, yeah, that's how it all happened. You know, it just spur of the moment let's just do it now because if we plan it it's and we had the plan already we just never executed on it um, right and uh so you know covid i guess was the impetus for it mm -hmm. um um kind of pushed us to get it done because we you know we didn't have anything else to do you're you're home you know right so we did it and uh now you're seeing what the work we put into four or five months ago uh, that's what you're seeing you know so it was it's been a great experience for us so i personally got married during covid um uh, and and i and i hired a band by the name of the spinoffs hey yeah they're on our label <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think I think I had them yet. I just picked them up, but yeah, we're, we're, we've got them on the bugging crazy management label. Yeah. 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 So, so JR was my booking agent at the time and JR was, he was, he was, uh, you know, we, we got it together and, uh, you know, nobody, I thought the whole thing was going to, to, to just be non-existent and we're going to have to wait another year and so forth. But, Sometimes right. you just got to jump in and, and move on and, and just do it. Right. Uh, right. So, and, yeah. and that's what we did. You know, we had, we had a, a, a date of May 15th, 2025, 15, 20. We, we like those yeah. numbers. Um, so, <laughs> so I said, you know what, we have to get it done. Come hell that's or high water. Because we, you know, we, as, as a cover band, we, we, we have what we call privates like your wedding. And we had, maybe 19 or 20 contracted events of weddings, people mm -hmm. that, you know, and they canceled, you know, because of COVID. And, and so it's kind of sad, but it's kind of, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that you, you, you went through with it anyway, you know, I mean. I um, mean, we, we got the cops called on us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I won't yeah. mention any names, Judge Cortez. Yeah, but um, no, the reason why, I guess, uh, you know, we got to look at the, the ordinances and so forth, but yeah. Yeah. Was it, was it a hundred at that point or I don't know what it was. I mean, shout out to mission PD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it came out a little, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, nonetheless, man, uh, you know, we, we were able to, to complete our wedding here in the backyard and, and JR, JR became a good friend and that's how I came in contact with you because now you picked yeah. them up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've got them on the buck and crazy management, uh, product buck and crazy productions. Uh, we're, we're managing them now. And again, it, the, the industry hasn't really picked back up. There's a few venues that are restaurants slash bars that can do their thing. And, mm -hmm. and the spinoffs is a, is a, is a, is a, they're, they've just so talented those guys and they, they've got a great, uh, product to, to give out. So hopefully we can, we can get some things going for them as well and get, and get yeah. some traction on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're, and, and above all good people, good people. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about Jason Moreno and what was his inspiration to go into music, <laughs> man? Well, I'll tell you, man, there's, there's a great story behind this. So, you know, I've always been into music as a, as a kid, when I was seven years old, I asked my dad for a guitar and my dad, who has no knowledge of music whatsoever. He bought a guitar from Sears and Roebuck. And uh, I think he even ordered it from a catalog and he came in and uh, it was right handed, but I'm a lefty. Mm. And so I didn't know anything about music either. I just knew I wanted to play. So I learned how to play on that thing upside down, like, uh, like Hendrix, you know? Um, 
And so I played music as, growing up as a child. Um, Roy and I, childhood friends, uh, when we became teenagers, I guess, maybe, maybe young adults, uh, we would jam out, you know, in the uh, backyard parties, you know, garage parties back then where people drew up their flyers on a piece of paper, keg parties, you know, we would jam out a little bit. And, uh, you know, after high school, I took off to college and uh, ended up getting married, raising a family, kind of left the music scene mm -hmm. um, and uh, got divorced maybe 10, 11, 12 years ago. I don't even know. But the uh, I ended up at a concert at the Far Events Center, and uh, Red Atkins was the the headliner, and I was VIP with K Tech because I was a big uh, big uh, buyer of advertising at the time. I did a lot of radios commercials, mm -hmm. um, so uh, they gave me some passes, and I went and checked it out. I was there, and I heard somebody calling my name, Jason, 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 from the backstage, and I was like, "Who's calling me?" And it's Roy. And I hadn't seen Roy in a lot. And Roy had already started performing country. He was mainly Tejano during that all that time. But okay. he's, he had just started performing country. And he says, hey, man, we reconnected. He says, hey, I need some help. And I said, what's up? And he says, I, you know, come and help me with my project. I've got a country band. I've got putting together. Come, I need some management. And I turned flat out, told him no. You know, I was drinking. I was going through bad times, you know, dark times, divorce, whatever, all that. And he went after me for a couple of months and finally got me on stage to, to do, a, um, you know, we were at one of the local bars and he says, Hey, bring your guitar. Just, just jam like the old days. And, and I got hooked, man. He, that's how he hooked me. And, um, it one night turned into two nights, turned into a week and I just kept playing. And, and, you know, at the time they really didn't have management. I think, uh, Roy's brother helped him with booking and stuff, but there really wasn't a an organized uh, effort to right, promote right. the band or do anything. So I said, "Hey, man, look, okay, fine, I'll take the management job, but but I still want to play." Um, he says, "Okay, we'll do it both ways." And so that was it. I, I picked it up. I started managing and rebranded the, the rebranded the whole band, um, reinvented ourselves. We we got new band members. And we went right back out there and man, for six, seven years, we were gigging Wednesday through Sunday, mm -hmm. nonstop, nonstop. We couldn't, I mean, sometimes we had two or three gigs on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great money. It was good fun, but I don't, after, uh, right before COVID hit, I think we were all just exhausted, you know? Well, there comes a time when you just want to say, you know what? I yeah. want to retire. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I th I think that's what happened to Roy. He just got exhausted also. And, yeah. uh, you know, Bugging Crazy kept playing because we had um, we had some obligations that we had to continue with, some contracts. Mm -hmm. We kind of, when Roy's decided to semi-retire or, or kind of take a break or whatever it was, it's like the Eagles. We didn't ever break up. <laughs> we just took a break. <laughs> um, he... Uh, you know, we, we had some obligations we had to meet. And so we kind of found a replacement to just fill in during the meantime. And, and then once that was done, we all took a break because we were just exhausted, you know, mm -hmm. six years, seven years, nonstop of late nights and early mornings. And a couple of the guys in the band had real jobs. And, and, you know, I left my career. I had a, a great career in human resources and marketing and, um, you know, at, at one point I was a C level executive for a big firm, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I left all that to do music and, and, uh, because I was not happy in the life I had, you know, man. And it's like they say, I mean, you never work a day in your life yeah. as long as you're doing what you love. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and I'll be very honest with you, man. Like, like sometimes I think to myself, like I'm an administrator, right. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. When, when when is this over when can i have like good fun <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know but uh because i think to i think back to like when when i was gigging and when i was like out there having fun you know it was yeah. fun and and you're making connections however you know you, you need to start creating a plan for retirement right and and and, and i think that's where where yeah i mean yeah the, it, the financial side of it 
is different and you got to plan differently yeah. um, um, and you got to spend differently and you got to live differently. But the, 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 um, the security isn't there. You have to create it, you know? Right. Um, and so it's a whole different lifestyle, but I embraced it. And, uh, you know, it, it was, I talked to my kids my kids live with me. I talked to them at the time and I said, Hey guys, look, things are going to change a little bit for a while. But I promise you, you know, we'll 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 get back to where, you know, the lifestyle that we were used to living, you know. But even then, the more you make, the more you spend, bro. So, you know, oh, unless you know, problems. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not the richest guy out there, but I my bills are paid, my home yeah. is paid, my cars are paid, and you know, I, I'm okay with the 2009 Dodge uh you know, Odyssey, or what do I have an Odyssey? Dodge oh, start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay driving a minivan. I don't need a, the, the latest diesel truck or the latest iPhone. You know, I'm okay with. with sí, 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 claro que sí. Jason Moreno <laughs> and his soccer mom vehicle. Yes, sir. <laughs> I get so much shit for that. Believe me, man. But, hey, but you know what? That It carries all the guitars. It carries it all the drums. You know, it's the best. It's, it, it's got so many miles on it from going to, to West Texas and and Abilene and all these, these areas. That's, that's our, that's our, that's our traveling van. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All, all the work gets come out of the van. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like the Partridge family. And so, yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> we're not oh, with Quitos, man. but they're big kids you know <laughs> in our hearts as parents you know they're still with Quitos. <laughs> mm -hmm. man oh hey man so i see you wearing an america hat i mean are you yeah. are you a big patriot or what's 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 the status on I'm a, that i'm a patriot yeah i'm a patriot hey uh you know i'm a let me tell you people ask me all the time because i'm not afraid to say i vote for president trump and i support him but you know i'm a um I'm a, I mean, how do I put it? I'm a Christian. I'm an American with conservative values, gotcha. you know, and, and that's what I am. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm not libertarian. I'm none of those things, you know, I'm not affiliated, but <laughs> at this point, at this point, you know, my, my, my choice is president Trump. Um, I'm a, I'm and, a human being with American yeah. values, with uh, conservative views. Yeah. I'm in the middle. But I'm a human being. I don't see yeah. color. <laughs> right. It's such a such a uh, very uh, polarized uh, country, man. Very sensitive topic right now. Like if you bring it up anywhere, yeah. I mean, I, people have gone as far as call me a racist, you know. And I'm no, like, oh, yeah, man. I mean, it, you know, at one point I was very vocal about things on, yeah. on my social media page and. And we met with our our people, you know, that are promoting the band now. And it's like, oh, cut that out. Stop with that shit. And I was like, OK, um, you know, for some reason, musicians aren't supposed to have a voice, I guess, unless you're a liberal, but a liberal musician like Taylor Swift. But, um, you know, so for us, it was a, a stigma that they didn't want it to be attached to us. But so but but I, you know, I, I believe in certain things. I was raised a certain way, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, and people take offense to my beliefs. I don't force my beliefs on them. Right. Right. And, but they want to force, they want force me not to believe that way. And, and so when I stand my ground, people get so sensitive about it. I'm not forcing them to think my way. I'm not asking them to think my way. I'm just expressing how I feel and why. Yeah. And why I do, you know, support. And it just got way out of hand, in my in my opinion. You know, the world, the, the United States is just. No, but it is. It's, it's uh, I mean, we live in a world right now where social media drives everything. And, yeah. you know, it, it just becomes so polarized. You know, you either believe one way or another. Right. And, and, and you know. And, what, and there's no compromising. I mean, what happened well, to compromise? Well, you know? that's, that's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. what we need to understand is, you know what? Jason, I respect your views and I hope you respect mine too. You know, exactly. let's, let's agree to disagree and move on. Yeah. I, there's some, just, of, some of, go ahead. Go ahead. Some of my best friends are, are way out there on the left, you know, and you know, that's totally fine. It doesn't matter when we sit down and drink beer, you know, and make some music. That's, that's all that, that's all that matters. And, right. you know, but, 
but I've seen some some extremists on both sides to the right and to the left that just don't hey don't talk to me anymore I've lost friends because of you know they just don't agree with me and you know and you know what sorry. I can probably guarantee you that they don't even vote <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy but, uh, anyways man it's the so the valley you know where we're at you you mentioned you got people like john garcia you have people like jason you have people like uh you know we've had what well, what is san benito freddie fender freddie we have fender. people like the pulidos we have people like you know there's just a vast amount of individuals that come from the valley yeah and and i think i feel what i'm hearing is that there's just more exposure that needs to be done in a, in a way where it doesn't uh, hold you to this folk style. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different, um, I guess everybody has a different goal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our radio promoter tells us a story about a guy by the name of Bubba in San Antonio. And uh, he's a low, he's, he's gone now, but he was a local legend and he was totally happy with that. He went to Nashville. He tried to do his thing up there. And he was making it pretty good, but he left all that. He didn't want to do that. And he came back to San Antonio and he was okay gigging in the dance halls and the bars and being that local legend. I mean, and we've had plenty of them. Steve Valdez, uh, Bo Garza, um, you know, uh, you mentioned a lot of names. Um, and, you know, it's different goals for, for everybody. But right now right. our goal, our goal is to stretch that net beyond that, that regional, regional act. Um, we want if we can get statewide if we can get some national exposure even international i mean we're, that's we're open to that right now so at this point in our life yeah. recently i was watching this documentary on this one individual who blew up the internet yeah. uh and you know he also went to court you know snitched on some people and so forth <laughs> <laughs> but but he created <laughs> but he created some kind of formula in his mind that he thought was a formula and the I, formula was i saw that documentary i think i know what you're talking about yeah. yeah yeah so what he says is let me be as infamous as i can be or let me just be right. completely out there as much as i can be and sure enough and now everybody's you know, copying him you know Every, I, mean, I mean do you do you see that as a problem or do you see that as a, as what, how do you how do you view that, man? You know, he, to, in my mind, he was he's is a very talented guy. When I hear his music, um, it 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 makes if it makes you move your head like that. I mean, it, it's it's probably a good good song. Right. Um, and, and I my kids listen to it. I've never listened to like the lyrics or I don't know, you know, all the subliminal stuff that you know whatever they say he says. But when it comes to the beat and the melody. I enjoy it. I like it. You know, there's certain times where I'm in that mood and I want to hear it and I hear it. Can't mm -hmm. understand what he's saying most of the time, but he's got a great formula. But I never saw anybody so extreme as him when it comes to the look, you know, the facial tattoos, the, the colored hair. Mm -hmm. When it comes to all of that, now you see every now it's like the standard Every yeah. artist that wants to be recognized is doing that, but he set the trend, you know, and uh, he, you know, he was, he was years above his age, obviously, or he is, you know, and, and, you know, maybe his antics or maybe he's, but it's all like a formula is what, you know, I remember I watched the document documentary and it's a formula that he's, he's happy with and it's working for him. So, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I seem to take no issue with that, you know, so everybody's got a different plan. So fucking crazy goes into a bar and just starts <laughs> trashing the place and gets t goes on TMZ live. Yeah, e that happen, so can you but... can you imagine the views on that? <laughs> I, you know, I think there's some video out there, some couple of bar fights that we started, but you know, um, who hasn't been in a bar fight, right? But um, but no, uh, you know, we're we're uh we're a little more uh, conservative, I, I would say. I mean, we've trashed a couple of hotels and whatnot, but yeah, I mean, you got to pay for it. But you know, it's it was fun. You know? No, hombre, like it's it seems that that's what people like, man. El murero, yeah, <laughs> sucios, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, when we've looked at our analyzed our fan base, it's it's very family oriented. Um, yeah, you know, a, a big part of it is. 
70 uh, percent of our fan base comes is, is a female gender um you know so you, you got to play to what your fans like you know i mean right you know we're we know i think we understand our fan base pretty well um and uh i guess that's why we get a lot of a lot of support from folks um so I, we're never going to embarrass anybody or embarrass ourselves i hope not but <laughs> i don't think we'll you'll ever see us with a tattoo on our face though oh man well <laughs> so i hope not either <laughs> <laughs> oh man but but will i see you guys in skinny jeans <laughs> no. you'll never what, see what, what do you think of that man? like I, I see some of these individuals that it's it's as they get older they start trying to dress younger oh yeah i you know i i'm not going to shame anybody if they they feel comfortable in what you're wearing then be happy with it but you'll never see bucky bucky crazy and cream in skinny jeans (laughs) you know the uh my girlfriend is a big uh um uh what's his name uh the country singer that um he wears Mm. the big the hat like that uh i can't even think of his jason aldean now older um, he's married to the hot blonde chick. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I, I hardly follow country. Hardly do I. Yeah, I, I, he's a big Nashville hit. So, but he wears black plastic or leather skinny jeans and and stuff and black plastic hats, and it works for him. You know, he's right. one of the number one hit artists out there. He's probably had, you know, sixteen or seventeen number one hits. You know, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. There Tim you go. McGraw. Yeah. yeah. You'll never see us dressed like him, though, but it works for him, right? You know, um, and, you know, I guarantee when we went to Nashville, we saw a lot of skinny jeans. But, hey, if, if, if it works for them and if kids like it and they're selling records, you know, all for it. You know? I remember I, the days and the times of like there was there was two types of gangs and it was yeah. the Pachucos and the Kickers. Yeah. yeah does it, does that ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> you know what and 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 i got along with both you know i was yeah. both but i'll tell you what i what i did wear this weekend i wore a pair of bell bottoms you know where'd you get those um southern comfort in edinburgh okay. yeah, wow. yeah i got a bell pair bottoms. of bell bottoms yeah they were they were pretty pretty badass i mean they were the huge ones that stick out the whole way but but they were uh they were bell bottoms and yeah I think they're making a comeback or something like that. But. Different. Wow. Wow. I had, is there a picture out there with you in bill bottoms? Uh, probably. Yeah. I think, I think somebody has got a couple of red carpet pictures out there with the bill bottom. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm I'll send it to you. Yeah. I think I already saw it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll tell you what, man. So, so moving on with the radio, moving on merchandise, yeah. man. How, I mean, this one thing I've always heard is that, where you make your money as a band is going to be at the shows and it's through merchandising. Yeah. Is that correct? That is correct. You know, we, we had a, we had a merch booth this weekend and we made a couple grand off that. And, you know, it's, it's that that's almost, you know, half of, of what you make as a total is just, you know, it's, you can't, you can't be out there without merchandise. I mean, and people love it. People love what they want to support you. They want to wear your shirt. They want to wear your cap. So we, we practically sold out this weekend, but, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have a store and so we're not, we do it by, by the post office, you know, or cash app and people message us, Hey, I want a cap. Okay. We'll send us the money. We'll send you the cap. And, you know, so and other than that, we'll do it at the live performances. So, right. but yeah, that's big merchandising is a big part of it, a big part of the business. So if, if, you, if all the young bands are out there listening or if they pay attention, you know, get yourself a cap or a t-shirt or something and always have it with you and sell it. Man. You got a brand. You got to brand it, man. You yeah. got to brand it. I mean, I, I remember, I, I remember being in Edinburgh at a, at a local place and we had just opened up directly across from the university. And one of the guys at the time I'm, I'm here DJing, but I had already ordered myself some, some flyers and, yeah. and they had my name on there, JZL, you know? Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I picked up quickly on is we got to take pictures take pictures yeah. with the flyers and sure enough man one of the one of the guys that was there he, he looks at the owner he says i don't know where you got this kid but this guy this kid knows branding and, yeah. and he's got it and sure enough yeah. man, there's just a whole bunch of pictures out there with jzl and sure enough it, it led to 
more people wanting, hey, Jay Zio, are you going to be available? Can you know, we heard we heard your cuts, we heard your mixes. You know, can you come over yeah. here? And, uh, demand definitely 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 yeah you got to create the buzz man and and things are so there's so many platforms now it's kind of hard to keep up with everything so you know we mainly uh, stick to facebook and and instagram because that's where most most of our fans you know are right now but you know we'll do uh snapchat filters and and uh you know um uh tweet uh tweet twitter you know twitter, we'll, yeah. we'll do we'll do some campaigns on those also but you know the merchant money for 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 entertainment is in live performances right now and in merchandise and there's one artist here in the valley rock and roll james who who's like the master merchandiser and so i've learned a lot from him he's mm-hmm. that, that guy can live off of merchandising off of the merchandise he sells alone you know he's done a great job branding his his, his music um you know, hopefully ours, and we've had maybe eight or nine different lines of, of, of shirts and, you know, four or five different de- designs of caps. We never seem to be able to keep them in stock, but, you know, uh, we that's probably an area where we can improve upon, you know, getting those online sales as well. But that's boring, man. People don't want to hear that. Do they? Uh, well, I mean, I would like to see some of that merch, man. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I saw that no. cap earlier. And huh. I'm like, where can I get one of those? So I, I think I think uh, Joe's Bot Podcast is definitely going to be rocking one pretty soon. Yeah, man, we got yeah. the right one too. Red, nice. So, hey, man, let me ask you this a question. Let's 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 uh, close a, close a segment with just uh, relevant topics of what's going on in America right now. And yeah, we man. got we we got uh we got a fight coming up. You know, that's a very yeah. interesting fight. Uh, it's going to be boxing match between mike tyson mike Jones tyson Jr. yeah was that friday night that's saturday so it's, it's 20 usually it's boxing weekend, matches are right? yeah usually boxing matches are on saturday so i saturday. believe it's on saturday yeah i've been i've been i want to watch that but man i don't know who i'm going to support but too bad you're going to be gigging on saturday <laughs> no actually i think we're on a break i think we're on break uh, for the rest of the year Right. Yeah, we 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 got to go back to studio mid December, so I don't think we're gigging the rest of the year. If we do something, it'd be a small, a small uh, acoustic gig or something. But um, uh, Mike Tyson, man, I I grew up watching that guy, dude, and 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 I like his. I saw I've seen his documentary too. I I like the guy, but Roy Jones, Roy Jones, Roy Roy Jones Jr. He's just a great guy too, man. He's right. you know uh, uh, he, he's he's a good athlete, you know, and he's, he's respectable and he's respected. And, um, so I don't know who I want to win, man. Who are you going for? Well, here's the thing, man. Mike Tyson, I mean, we got to remember these guys are in their fifties and not knocking anybody in their fifties. I'm just saying they're not, we're not as good as we once were. Oh, of course. man. I'm still recovering from this weekend. And, and, you know, just, just off of that alone, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, one, one of the things they said, this is for charity. So is it really going to be a fight? Oh, yeah. You know? And um, I've been so disappointed with boxing in general for the last few years. Um, it just seems, I don't want to say fixed, but once you get a rematch, you know, and a split decision and just to get another rematch and there's three fights, you know, come on, man, let them, let the guy win. Whoever, whoever won. I've seen so many fights where, you know, the, the Oscar De La Hoya should have won and he didn't get it, you know, and, but I, you know, um, I, I think the competitive spirit in an athlete lives and is bigger than any kind of exhibition, um, a plan that they might have so i think we're gonna see some punches man i don't know if they can what, how many rounds are they going they're going eight rounds oh damn that's yeah. a lot um yeah man i think i'm gonna i think I, I think i'm gonna pull for mike tyson man yeah all right all that right guy, that, that guy that guy uh yeah he needs, he needs something positive in his life man no, no, in other news, in other noticias, <laughs> <laughs> you got Canelo Alvarez that just left the zone. Yeah. And he's going to be boxing at the end of the year, is what I'm hearing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, do I you think he, paid, he, I, I haven't followed that very much. So I, I don't know if I can speak intelligently on it. 
Well, you know, like your, he he had he had a a contract with with DAZN and Golden Boy Promotions right. and so forth, but but he decided to say, you know what, I'm breaking off, right. and 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 I'm gonna do things my way. Yeah. And and so I guess the biggest question here is, do you think he has enough to do it his way, or did did he need DAZN? Man, um, again, that's just so close to home. Um, hits close to home because. You know, like in our world, the music world, you you, you know, doing things on your own as an independent, you, you got to kick and claw and scratch and fight. And there's the big boys up on top that are always pushing, going to push you down. Right. Uh, because they don't want you in their market taking a piece of what they got, you know. And if they, you're going to take a piece of it, you got to play by the rules, play by the rules and conform. So, I, you know, I'll always support the underdog, you know. Uh, so, more power to him and i hope he can do it i you know i hope i hope people support him his, his effort you know so and, and and to close this out i think i told you I, it seems that donna's on the map recently in my radar they've been in my radar recently some way somehow yeah. i don't know what's going on but i mean i had recently sean mech on the show and yeah. sean mech is a hip-hop artist like yeah so i want my question is like you know is your brand of bucking crazy productions just strictly uh rock and, and and country or is it versatile you know we we can do anything um when we do a private session for someone or a private show we'll we'll mix it up we can do tejano cumbia uh waltzes uh-huh. country texas country classic country rock and roll i mean heck we've even done some hip-hop before so when you told me about sean i looked him up right away and i said oh, i'm gonna get this guy to open up for us, us next time you know we got to support our, our our hometown heroes you know um i love the city i come from donna we're uh we're we've got we've got a uh you know donna's not you know the 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 a lot of people have negative connotations about our town. <laughs> They're always so, in the news, right? <laughs> they're always in the news. I don't know what it is, but you know, there's always something to say about Donna. But you know what? There's a lot of great people here. There's a lot of artists, very talented artists that come out of Donna. I'm yeah. glad these guys are getting some exposure. I'm glad you're helping them. Um, you know, Donna, Donna doesn't do a great job of supporting their their own people, um, but we support ourselves um so uh you know we get a lot of love from, from the people but the establishment they pull up the politics you know there's it, there's there's just not the infrastructure there to support you know people that are coming out of down the as as talented folks and making it somewhere they don't kind of claim them um you know fun, funny funny you say that because recently i was yeah. i was having this conversation and and what we can do any any city any entity um yeah. wor- working collaboratively to to try to bridge the gap so to speak um yeah. so if there's a need for example for bucking crazy country uh, to farm students or to farm kids towards that country music sound well yeah. you, well you know like we can collaborate with different partnerships and say you know what uh this is a this is something that we're providing we're offering you know, we can work with you guys to try to gear and 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 probably produce more, you know, future future talent. Definitely, yeah, yeah. We've 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 done a lot of homegrown stuff here, um, grassroots efforts for you know trying to uh, promote the, the, the you know not just ourselves but give back to the community, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so we've done a lot of things at the high schools and at the different schools. Um, yeah, man, we're we're game to help out any way we can um you know the city of mission aren't you for mission i city am of mission yeah. has, is a great community uh they love us to death they uh they, they they love live music any genre and a lot of the establishments out there work in collaboration with each other i guess to promote and to um and to um you know make the city a destination for live music and i applaud their efforts and i love everything they do we went we just did our release um party this weekend in mission Mm -hmm. and worked with the uh, local seed there um i guess it was uh, the food park and five by five brewery and a couple other establishments but we've always 
performed in mission and always felt the love and everything. And I wish Donna would do, uh, would follow those footsteps. They've tried to have concerts before here, but again, it's very political. Um, you know, there's so much talent here in Donna. Why not, why not use that talent, um, instead of farming it out, you know, but Hey, that's, that's not my call. Right. But, but mission, but, mission certainly is, is the roadmap I would say. But then you have individuals that are coming up, for example, such as myself, who is a very open-minded individual. And, you know, we're, we're, I'm thinking, this is the way I'm thinking right now. Yeah. I've, I've talked, I've been in the music industry as a DJ, not as a musician, but just as a DJ. Um, yeah. I've made connections with individuals that have been business owners. You know, I mean, you're talking about what the most, the one that comes to my mind right away is, is uh, now Harley Davidson, what used to be uh, yeah. La Vida Real. Oh, the, you know, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you, you talk about individuals, you know, of that caliber that yeah. have influence. Why not, work, why, not, why not reach out to these individuals and say, you know what, let's try to create a, a, a blueprint so that we can co collaborate. I mean, yeah, man. you're looking at, at, if you go back to history, I mean, we had a menudo play the McCallum Memorial Stadium oh, yeah. many years ago. Yeah. You know, and I've always said this. I'm like, well, if, if it was done before, why can't we do it now? Well, we, well, we did with Pitbull, but, and that's another story. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, was it, was it, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Pitbull. Oh, uh, it was, uh, uh, yeah. Iglesias, um, Iglesias. Julio, uh, yeah, his son. Yeah. His, Miguel, yeah. Uh, what's his name? I'm forgetting. Uh, yeah. I remember that. It was during the parade. Yeah. Right, right. So, so we recently did it, but like for a parade, but it came with, yeah. it came with a negative connotation, yeah. you know, because, uh, you know, money, money. So, so, so it goes back to these things. Like if we're going to do it, we, we got to do it right. Well, tax dollars shouldn't be used to make people feel good. I mean, it's, right. it's supposed to use it to make them feel bad. I mean, <laughs> come on guys. I mean, like, it, it, I don't know. They had uh, what, the, what, what their their measurement of success was but you know when you get a guy as talented as that or as high profile as that you know into the valley that's that's great for everybody right you know um same thing happened i think with toby keith and in in, in, in far. far yeah 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 just so many people knocking it and and not supporting the promoters and and i know there's a whole lawsuit about all that stuff also but um you know you know, I don't understand why people don't want um, to support a uh, that the artistry of, of live making live music. You know, it's it brings people together. People feel great when they're listening to music, you know, and yeah. and, and and I think any person who's had any type of mood swing or as any type of they can attribute a song to every defining moment of their life. And and um it's just, it's just beautiful, man. And they, I think the municipalities should, should embrace that. You know, um, we could have venues like San Antonio and, and the other markets and, 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 and amphitheaters here and there. And I'm starting to see some of those pop up, you know, like the Island at that, um, at Clayton's. I guess Clayton's Las Palmas also has an amphitheater. Yeah, you know, yeah. People are starting to embrace it a little bit. Um, so, you know, the community, hopefully we'll come around. Um, but, uh, you know, we'd be happy to help in any way we can, you know, and, and I think that's where we're headed or we were headed, but then COVID hit. Right. Because yeah, uh, yeah as, you're right. Yeah. Because we had that amphitheater at that soccer stadium. We have bird yes. in arena coming through and we're getting a lot yes. more acts. Um, we have, like you said, South Padre. I mean, we have so many venues now that we didn't have before. Right. That's but, true. But like you said, man, I, I think we need to remove the the stigma of like of wasting tax dollars or, or, or yeah, we just need to really do it right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And because at the end of the day, we're trying to produce something, you know, to to benefit a community, a society. Yeah. Right. Now, you know, if we do it right, we in theory, it should work and it should produce more. But but once once you start messing around with like uh, things that are not reported, uh, that's where that's where yeah. you draw a fine line. 
that's the problem, man. You get, I mean, at, uh, you know, absolute power corrupts or whatever they say that that saying is. And, but then you got the same people that are saying, okay, why are we wasting our tax dollars? The same people are saying, uh, there's nothing to do in the Valley, you know? So it, it, it's hard to make people happy, you know? And I think, I think if, if the Valley as a whole, or even communities individually can, you know, just decide to say, Hey, look, um, uh, uh, individual lifestyle or, or, or music, this music, uh, thing is part of our master plan, then just make it and go for it. You know, you're not going to mm -hmm. please everybody, but I guarantee you, everybody enjoys music. Oh, yeah. know, one person who doesn't. So I mean, um, music is the most democratic thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah i don't know about that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm just messing around with you the making man, of it anyway yeah <laughs> jason man it's been a beautiful time just just talking collaborating and discussing music it's been a, a pleasure having you on board um i look forward to to any more collaborations maybe we can get john garcia on here maybe we can get roy torres on here um, yeah definitely brother yeah I, I would definitely appreciate that but you know roy torres sister let's let's uh Let's play that one song again, man. What was it called? Heartbreak song. Heartbreak song, man. We're going to exit with that one. Here we go. Yeah. So if you haven't, if you're just listening, Roy Torres, fucking crazy, heartbreak song. Where can we find this? Right now you can find it on all music platforms, iTunes, Amazon, uh, YouTube. YouTube has our new video on it also. And so uh, Roy Torres and Bucky Crazy. On all social media platforms. Like, share, awesome. subscribe. Yep. If you can, do it on Spotify because that's on the charts. All <laughs> right. Amazing. Jason, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, I'm man. Brother. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yes, sir. It. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.